Hello everyone, Mr. Melham here, and today we're going to be talking about the connection between light and vision. This is an introductory lesson. Our eyes are the windows to our world. We see things because light enters into our eyes and then is processed inside of our brain. Because of this, we're able to enjoy seeing the many beautiful things around us. But this idea that light enters into our eyes, as logical as it may seem, wasn't always believed. For many thousands of years, this very question of how humans are able to see puzzled even the most brilliant brilliant minds. For example, around 2500 years ago, some really smart people wondered about this very question. They all agreed that light was necessary to see the things around us, but what they didn't understand is where this light came from. And then, one day, a really smart man named Pythagoras suggested that maybe our eyes emitted light rays, sort of like a flashlight would. And when those light rays shined upon objects, we would see them. Then, another very smart philosopher named Empedocles believed that all things were made up of fire, earth, air, and water, including our very own eyes. He then went on to suggest that it was the Greek goddess of love named Aphrodite who lit an actual flame inside of our eyes, like little torches. And this gave us the ability to see the world, and that people of strong rank had strong flames in their eyes too. And this resulted in a lot of traditions forming. For example, today soldiers often salute their leaders, but they do it out of respect. But the whole idea of saluting leaders was started by the Greeks in order to shade themselves from the powerful bright beams of light that they believed came out of their leader's eyes. Other great Greek influencers such as Ptolemy and Euclid also believed the same thing and even went as far as to conduct experiments to try and prove it. I should add that their experiments were not very valid or scientific. And then more recently, in around 200 AD, a very famous medical doctor named Galen suggested that humans were able to see because, get this, our eyes blasted out light. He had the exact same beliefs as everyone else before him. And because of how well people respected him, they continued to believe this idea for almost another thousand years, until a man came and changed the world of science forever. This man was a brilliant scientist from Iraq and his name was Ibn al-Haytham, or as some people refer to him today as Al-Hazen. He questioned this theory of vision, and his reasoning went something like this. If light came out of our eyes like a flashlight, then why is it that we cannot see in complete darkness? I mean, surely if we were born with laser beams in our eyes, then we would have no problem seeing in complete darkness. He then designed some very carefully thought out and controlled experiments to prove that our eyes do not send out light, but rather take in or receive the light, similar to what a window in your house would do. And then, through even more carefully planned out experiments, he went on to show that vision itself does not happen inside of our eyes, but rather vision happens inside of our brain. al suggested that there are two types of objects in this world, those that make light and those that reflect it. Those items that make light are called light sources and include things like the sun, flashlights, fires, glow-in-the-dark items, and most of our devices. Matter that reflects light includes everything else. If you could see it, but it doesn't make any of its own light, then chances are it is called a reflector of light. And just like when a ball bounces off the wall, the light from the sun or any other light source will bounce off and reflect off, say, the flowers and grass in this field. They all reflect light. When light hits a surface, it bounces off of that surface and goes straight into your eyes. Everything around you sends light rays into your eyes. All of the things around me in this room, like this microphone, my skin, this lamp beside me, all of them send light rays into my eyes, but some of these things have a job of making light, and we call these things light sources, kind of like the light over here and the light back there. And then we've got other things that have the job of not making light, but reflecting the light that these light sources make, and we call these things light reflectors. These are the things like this microphone, my skin, and pretty much everything else around me in this room that I can see, but doesn't produce any of its own light. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how vision works. We depend on light sources to make light. The light then reflects and bounces off the objects around us, enters our eyes so that it can be processed inside of our brain. When your brain processes this information, it informs you of what you are looking at. For example, the only reason I'm able to see this microphone here is because the light sources around me in this room are blasting their light at it. The light reflects off of the microphone, goes into my eyes, gets processed into my brain, and my brain then reads that information and converts it into an image. The same thing is happening here with this aluminum foil. 
Although it may appear to be a light source because it's incredibly shiny and bright, it's actually just a light reflector and it reflects a lot of light. It doesn't have the ability to produce any of its own light. I mean, put it in a dark room and it will not shine at all. And the only reason I can see it right now is because it's reflecting the light sources in this room off of it, heading it straight into my eye for processing inside of my brain. If you take these light sources away, then there will be no light to bounce off the objects around us and so we wouldn't be able to see see anything. Aside from the sun, most of the light around us is produced from electricity. And before electricity was invented, and before streets were flooded with street lamps, car lights, and LED displays, our main source of light at night would have been fire. People would light torches or candles so that they could see their surroundings. But there was another source of light that was used historically, even before man learned how to make his own fire. And what was this light source? It was none other than the moon. At over 384,000 kilometers away, the moon is the brightest source of light in the night sky. Or is it? Is the moon even a source of light? No, the moon is not a source of light. And I know that on first glance, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, the moon can be so bright that it can blast through the clouds at night or light up an entire area that is in otherwise complete darkness. The moon's light can often light up your entire bedroom while you try to get some sleep so much that it has affected the sleep of many people. Yes, all of this is true, except for the fact that the moon is not a light source. Remember, a light source is able to produce its own light and the moon cannot do that. The moon is a giant rock in space that has no ability to produce any light at all. So then how is it possible for something that cannot produce any light to be so bright in the night sky? Okay, here's what's going on. The sun shines its light onto the moon to make it glow. The sun is the producer of the light. It's the light source, whereas the moon is a reflector of light. The moon reflects the light given to it by the sun, and without the sun, the moon is just a giant rock in space. Think about that the next time the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie. So there you have it. There are only sources of light and reflectors of light. Light sources make the light, which then bounce off of everything else around us, which we call light reflectors. The light enters our eyes and gets processed inside of our brain. The moon cannot make its own light, but rather reflects the light from the sun. And if you found this video helpful, informative, and even remotely illuminating, then please click like, subscribe, and share. And if you have any other questions, then please let me know.